Welcome to Web Development Lesson 3.7. In this video, we're going to continue our exploration of program development, as well as explore the math object, uh, which gives us more capabilities in creating sophisticated uh, formulas. So let's get to it. So what we want to do is to kind of replicate this, the Pythagorean theorem which allows us to calculate the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So, you know, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If you take the square root of both sides, you are able to calculate c, which is what this formula is. Now, the nice thing is right in Google, if you were to put a couple of values in, you see it gives you the answer. So if the legs are three, uh, three and four, then the hypotenuse is five. So we want to replicate the same functionality in our own uh, project. So just to kind of show you what we have in the replica so far. You know, we don't have much. We have the title Pythagorean Theorem, and we have our formulas. So what we want to do is we want to get to a point where we are replicating the same functionality. So before we get into a discussion of the math object, let's just review the program development. So we understand our problem. We want to be able to provide our user the ability to calculate the hypotenuse given uh, the, sides, the, the size of the legs. So just like on Google, we need to provide two text inputs. So this is kind of like a nice way of doing it because we're simply modeling something else. But if we didn't have this visual, this example, then remember, it's all about if you want me to calculate C, I need to know A and B. So we need to provide the user the ability to uh, input those two uh, values. So these are text values, uh, text inputs. And don't forget that with text inputs, we need an ID. And there's no need to get creative. We could just simply use A and B. And let's provide a placeholder so that the user knows what to enter in there. Uh, so we'll say enter A here. And we'll just do a little copy and paste. And we'll do the same thing for B. Remember, we don't ask the user for C because that's the whole purpose of our program. Our program will calculate C. Because sometimes students get into this autopilot where they just create a text input for all the variables. Again, the purpose of the program is to calculate C. So we just need A and B. Uh, the next thing we need, in we need in terms of a UI is something that the user can use to initiate the action. And that's typically a button. Uh, now, a button needs an event listener, an on-click listener. So let's add that. It needs a handler. So what should we call this? Uh, high pop. Okay. And it needs a value, or else the button won't have anything on it. And we'll say, not too creative, let's just say calculate C. And let's just see what this looks like. Again, it's not going to be functional, but at least we see our UI. So we got our two text boxes. We got our button. And we need to add one more thing. I'm going to do it as a, um, actually, I'll do it as a div. Actually, just to show you that you could pretty much use anything, I'll use a paragraph. What you really need is an, <clears throat> an element that allows you to stick HTML into it. So we can do dot enter HTML with it. So I'm going to use a paragraph. I give it an ID of output, which is what we've been using in the last couple of videos. Again, no need to reinvent the wheel. Now we're ready to start our program. Now we're still in the program development phase. This has nothing to do with the, nothing to do with the math object yet. So let's go to our script section. <clears throat> so this one here. Let's create our function, hypot. And the first step in any function is to get those, uh, those elements that have IDs uh, and their values. So we'll do it in steps. So we'll say document dot get element by ID A. And notice it, this is nice. Using the ID of A and the variable A gives it a natural connection between the two, but there really isn't. Um, we can choose any name for our variable. We could choose any name for our ID, but it makes sense to kind of, you know, make them correlated. 
So this gets us the whole element. Remember, we don't want the whole element. We want the value that's in the element. Now, because the value that's in the element is a number, it's usually good practice uh, to go ahead and parse it. Because if you recall, anything that comes out of a text input is automatically a string data type. So we'll do a, a float just in case you decide to uh, put in some decimal numbers. And there you go. So we're going to do that. Do this for B. And now we have our two text inputs. Let's create our variable for our output. And we'll do document. Get element by ID. <clears throat> and this should feel like standard practice. Um, that you know you get your inputs, you get your elements, you get your uh, variable for that output element. And now you're ready to kind of do your process. So here's where we have to talk about it. Because up until now, you've learned how to do arithmetic operations, you know, plus signs, minus, multiplication, division, and even the exponent operator. But how do we do this, the square root? All right, so let's look at the math object. So the math object is something that's provided by JavaScript that gives us a lot of extra capabilities. So the first thing that they show in W3 schools is that math has a couple of constants. Um, for instance, if you need the value for pi, you could use 3.14. That's simple. Uh, but if you need something with a little more accuracy, you can type math.pi, and it gives you this number. Again, a lot more precision with that one. Uh, scrolling down, you know, you can see here there's a math.round, which will round the number. Uh, math.pow. Now, in a more recent version of JavaScript, uh, the asterisk asterisk operator was introduced that allows you to do exponents. So, you know, you could definitely use that one. Um, but I will say a lot of other languages, uh, if you're looking for longevity in terms of your knowledge, use this concept of a POW function to do uh, exponents, um, which is, you know, raise a number to a power. So we're going to practice this one in this video. Um, but again, using the, the asterisk asterisk operator is completely fine. Math.square root we're going to need for this one. Um, because as you can see, our formula requires us to take the square root of a squared plus b squared. Again, if you notice, all these functions are preceded by math. Uh, and then the name of the function. So it's the math object. And math is capitalized. Uh, if you kind of you know go through the rest of W3 schools, you'll see there's a lot of other convenient advanced mathematical operations that you can use. Absolute function, seal, uh, floor, uh, your trigonometric functions such as sine, cosine, tangent. Again, this will be left as as a job for you to explore uh, in combination with activities. But let's get back to our problem, which is to calculate the square root of a squared. Uh, plus b squared. So let's do that. So we'll say c is equal to math dot. Again, one of the cool things about uh, using an IDE is that if you have an object that has functions and variables to them, then the minute you put the dot operator, you should get a list of things that are possible. So what we're looking for is sqrt. It's a function. And now what we need to do is we need to provide the a squared plus b squared. Now we could do this. This is legitimate. This is a squared. Or if you kind of understand what a square means, we could also do that, b times b. You know, these are different options for doing something that is squared. What I want to practice, though, is the use of the math object. So we're going to use math.pow. And what it takes, it takes the base which in this case is a comma two. So this is the equivalent of doing a squared. So we're gonna do the same thing here. So b times b is b squared. So let's do math dot pow b comma two. Now this is a lot longer to write than, <laughs> than the other versions. But as I said earlier, uh, knowing this function is beneficial if you learn some other languages such as Java, uh, that doesn't have the asterisk asterisk operator. 
So let's finish this off. So going back to our program development uh, review, you know, we've gotten our input, we've gotten, you know, variables for all our elements. We've done our process. Don't forget one of the most important things, which is to spit out the answer. Because <laughs> students sometimes get happy that, oh, yeah, a, I did all the code. But then they forgot to display the answer. Again, to the user, they won't know that you've done all this great work unless you actually give them some feedback. So say output. And let's tell you what. Let's do a little bit of string interpolation to start practicing some of that. So I'm going to use the back tick. Uh, the back tick is the little thing that looks like an apostrophe that's next to the number one. Uh, you notice it's slightly slanted. This is not the apostrophe. Uh, it's the back tick. And let's simply say C is. And how do we use string interpolation? So let's do the dollar sign, the curly bracket. You'll notice that it automatically turns a different color, letting you know that, OK, this is not part of the string. I'm doing something different here. And all we're going to do is we're going to stick in the value of C. All right, so let's give it a whirl. Let's see what happens. So here's our program. We'll do 3 and 4, which was the same values we used on uh, the Google website. Let's hit Calculate C. And we got an error. <laughs> I'm going to take a guess that it was a little copy and paste error here. All right. So this was a live coding session, so things happen. Uh, but it's, it was good for you to see the error. Uh, and the error was that it can't find the read the value of uh, the property of value. And to me, usually when I see an error like that, that means that it's not retrieving the element properly. Uh, and usually that comes from, you know, not having the proper ID. And again, that came from doing a copy and paste. So let's run it again, see what happens. Three and a four, cross our fingers, we don't have any more errors. And the answer is five, which is the same answer we got from the Google's website, so our program works. Honestly, you should really test your program some more inputs. There might be some other hidden errors. But for right now, we're going to leave it like this. And let's get back to our presentation and let's review what we've done in this video. So we reviewed the program development cycle, uh, which involves understanding the problem, understanding what the output is, creating your UI, uh, which involves you know, understanding what our inputs need to be in order to produce the answer. And then we get to code. Now, once you get to code, you know, you got to get those variables for those elements. You know, you got to do the process, which in, you know, these uh, videos have been simply mathematical operations. And then don't forget, you got to spit out your, your answer uh, so that you have some feedback to give to the user. So hopefully, you know, you're excited. You can do uh, sophisticated math operation using the math object. Enjoy.